All right, let's have a look to see what's here. Hi everyone, it's Peter Zullins, Greeny Flicks Adventure 8. And I've got a box. Yes, it's an unboxing. It's not unboxing of something new, it's an unboxing of something old. I ordered off the internet and here it is yes it is a camera of course and it's a Nikon AWAD it's an underwater camera so it goes down to about five meters I think it's about 30 years old I use this for my travel overseas motorcycling across Africa there'll be some links to a movie that I've shot on 16 millimeter film and used this camera for my 35 millimeter photographs which were taking on Kodachrome 64 and Kodachrome 200 slide film. It was a great camera, indestructible, and um, you'll see from the movie places that I took it. When I eventually did get back to Australia after my travels, I left it in the car in a computer bag, uh, drove the car to the city, someone smashed the window, grabbed the computer bag and grabbed the camera. Never saw the camera again. Tried to get another copy of this because I just loved it so much, but it was impossible at the time. So that was back in the 1990s. Well, now there's a lot of old camera gear that's coming up on the internet, on eBay and other places. Searching for old film underwater cameras, I eventually found the model number, found this camera, and then I've been looking on the internet for a while until I found one that I liked at a reasonable price. There'll be some links there to show you. And I got it from Japan. It's just arrived today, so I'm keen to actually get out there, take a roll of film, and compare my expectations of what my memory was like taking this and having the user experience of shooting with a 35mm lens, because that's what this is, f2.8. And it'd be interesting to compare it to my Leica. <laughs> is that a fair comparison? Yes, so I'll be comparing the use of this, the ease of use, ergonomics, etc. Of course, what sort of results I get out of it. <laughs> to my other extreme, if you call this one extreme, this must be the other extreme. The Leica M10R with the 35mm Summicron F2 Apple lens. Taking shots with this, going to be taking shots with that. And we're going to be comparing the user experience and obviously what the end results are like. So operation, and this is all very straightforward. So there is an off button here. You can turn it on. And if you turn it the other way, you turn on the self timer. This is autofocus. It does take two AA batteries. I've already put the batteries in there. It focuses down to, I'm not entirely sure to tell you the truth. I guess that's gonna be part of the experimenting, how close I can actually get this focus. You can also do manual focus. So. 0.7 meters, 1.1, 1.6 meters, and 3.5 meters. Now, because it's an underwater camera, it means that I believe the autofocus doesn't work very well underwater. It works okay in the air, but not underwater. So if you want to focus underwater, then you have to use manual focus. Nevertheless, uh, in dark conditions where the autofocus doesn't work, you have an option to do manual focus. Otherwise, it's Autofocus and auto exposure. Auto exposure and autofocus works with the half press down. Don't know whether you can actually hear that or see that. You can just see the lens move. When I press halfway down. And if you look inside the viewfinder there, you'll see a number of different icons. And the type of icons you see are head and shoulders, uh, upper torso, and full length person, and mountains, so four settings. It has flash as well, look, you can even turn the flash on, light here on the back, so when, are you ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna flash you. <laughs> there you go, it's a flash. How often do people use flash these days? But anyway, it's there. It looks amazing. It takes me back 30 years when I used it. On the back, you can also put on the date onto, so it burns the date onto negative. From memory, I thought there was a separate battery that you had to install for that to work. Ah! 
<laughs> Look at this. All right. There is a battery there. Look at that. Battery sits in there. All right. So we we'll have to do is find the right battery now. That's a CR2025. Okay. Discovery. Put that in and then my data bank, data thingy bob here will work and it'll be able to put a, a date on the negative as you take the photograph. But otherwise it's looking pretty good. There is some foam here that sits on the film cartridge. It is self-loading. When you put the film in there, it goes across there, it's self-loading into there. And then you just pop that down and you close it. The seal, rubber seal around here looks in pretty good condition, so I'm pretty confident. I'm not gonna be taking this underwater. However, it could. All right, well, that's a nice discovery. There's a locking mechanism there, so you don't accidentally open it. And when you take your first shot, it winds on to frame number one once your film is in there. If at any stage you want to rewind manually, there is the rewind button here where you just activate it and then you'll rewind the film. Uh, I have some details when this was first manufactured, but I think it's in the 1980s when it was first manufactured. It'll be in the video. And I have a roll of film. And on the back here, it says developed by 2006. You might well say <laughs> this film is cactus. Um, I have already developed a number of rolls from another batch. I had a number of these and they did, I developed those in the last year, so they actually did turn out okay. Kodak 36 exposure, 200 ISO. In here you'll see some little, little connectors and that will sense what sort of film you loaded so it knows straight away that it's 200 ISO film. So that because it is auto exposure then you will know what to do. All right, so from memory, you just basically put it uh, in there, like so. Just let the film go onto the back. And it's loaded, so it's self-loading. As soon as I put it in, it should load to the first frame. All right, so close it, lock it, so the back is locked. <laughs> It's exciting! Okay, let's um, turn it on. And as soon as I press it, it should... <laughs> it should have loaded the first... It should have loaded the film. There is no way to check other than opening up the back, in which case you expose everything that's there. I'm going to assume that it actually has loaded properly. Let's get out into the field and take some photographs with both cameras and see what we get. I'll have the GoPro with me so at least we'll be able to capture the scene as we take them. Alright, I found my first location. It's nice even lighting so I don't want to sort of stress the film and stress the photo situation too much. So, why don't we take sort of a reference shot first. I'm using 200 ISO film in the little Nikon. So I'll go to 200 ISO on my Leica here. Being a selfie, I know from past experience I have to, if I'm pointing this, um, that should be about 0.5. Okay, so what I'll do is i use auto exposure to give me an exposure reading. I reckon 5.6 should be a nice uh, f-stop. And uh, because I got my Apple lens, which I can, I can focus right down to 0.5 meters, that's what I'll do. I'll take a selfie with 0.5 meters. Okay, here I go. I've got my interesting background. If I turn it on, that would help. Okay, here we go, and action. <laughs> Let's have a look to see. Okay, it worked. And focus, focus looks pretty good too. Focus is good, yeah, 0.5 meters. Seems to be about right, I'd say. I've got black and white JPEG, but I have the color raw, of course. 
This is exciting. All right, so I should just turn it on. And here we go. And um, let's see whether it does focus at 0.5 meters. <laughs> that was it. I might actually do a flash as well, just because I got it. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two shots. That's two dollars. A dollar a shot. Okay, we'll find another location. Well, this has uh, been lots of fun so far, taking photographs. I found out a few more things about the uh, little Nikon automatic. It was one of the first compact autofocus cameras, film cameras at the time. On the dial here, you got 0.7. This is manual focus. So what I liked about this, there was this manual focus override. So you didn't have to rely on autofocus. Just the same as with the light, you have to remember when the lens cap is on. <laughs> I think I took a couple of shots with the lens cap on and therefore it's going to be a black shot. But that's okay. Uh, so let's take that same shot with the Leica. Leica. It's about 0.6 meters. So I'll just go down to 0.6 and take the shot. Okay, do I have the shot? And I have the shot. Yes, it's fine. As far as size is concerned, it's about the same size as the Leica body. Obviously, the lens difference is noticeable but otherwise they're pretty much the same size so it fits in my bag quite easily 30 shots now i'll probably take another six shots somewhere around the harbor here whatever be able to get it processed and um, we'll be able to see the results that'll be exciting all right okay well i think i'm getting down to the last few shots which i'm keen to get done so that I can see whether this film has actually wound on correctly or not. So let's just grab some more shots. I'm going to be doing some close-ups here. So I'll take a shot here. It's wound on. Okay, so... Ah! I forgot to take the lens cap off. Alright, let's try that again. Um, I'll take that shot with my Leica as well, so I'll do 2.8. Right, that exposure was uh, one thirtieth of a second. That's good. That will give me a good reference. It's coming up to 36. Let's do a selfie. Hello, hello. <laughs> Let's take another shot. We're up to 37. It's got to rewind soon. That's assuming that I've wound on the film correctly. Yay! Okay, it has. All right, so it's stopped. It's not winding forward. That means it's run out of film. And therefore, the next process is to rewind. So it doesn't automatically rewind once it gets to the end. It just stops. If I turn it off, nothing happens. If I turn it on, nothing happens. Can't take a shot because it's run out of film, so I should just do that. It's rewinding, and the number count is also counting backwards. Should be picking up on this camera here, which is the Nikon W300 is the other camera that I'm using right now, in addition to the Nikon Z6 with the 24-70mm f4 s lens. It stopped. Theoretically, if I open up the back now, unlock, open it up, and okay, it does leave the leader there as well so if for some reason you're running a test roll it does leave a bit of a leader there uh, enough to be able to take the test roll out and uh, reuse it that's good that's a shot it's done
that goes into processing now and then I'll get it back I'll get it digitized and we'll be able to go into Lightroom and compare the shots that I've taken with the Leica as well this is so exciting for me hopefully it's Hopefully it's exciting for you too. <laughs> okay, we'll close it up. First lock and then lock that way. Success! And the counter's gone back to S. Ready for loading a new roll of film. Yay! It's here! Let's see the results that we got from the little Nikon. I can't believe it. 30 years later, eh? We got in here we've got a couple of oh look at this take 10% off your next online order isn't that nice with my thank you code I'll include this in the description so if you want 10% off your order at rewind use it for your own benefit of course okay so um, here it is from rewind photo lab here in Sydney uh, the store is closed right now because everything's in lockdown, but they do take online orders and you can get it delivered and posted to you. What I decided to do is get um, the film processed, voila, and then I also have a proof of what was actually taken, which is really convenient. And I also asked for these negatives to be scanned. So my first observations is that the image is very much underexposed. I don't know where you can actually see this through there. It's not a very dense file. So whether the camera is underexposing or whether the film is ratchet. But the density is pretty low. Yes, there is an image there. Obviously it's printed, so yes, they are able to get an image out of it. But what happens is if it's if the film is underexposed, then you you lose a lot of detail. Yeah, some of these aren't too bad. Okay. So it is auto focus and auto exposure. So there's no control over the exposure. Probably would have liked to see it a bit more exposed. And it uses the coding on the cartridge to set the exposure. So you've got no control over the exposure as such. I suppose what you can do is when you put it into photo processing, you can tell them to um, do some extra processing on the film but this is old film so whether the sensitivity of the film has reduced over the years that is also a possibility all right um, I'm gonna put go into Lightroom and I will compare the shots to the ones taken with the Leica and we'll run them side by side next to each other so you'll be able to see and that will be the end of the video. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Any questions, then do comment. Uh, and I welcome, I'll answer any questions you have about uh, this wonderful little camera. Needless to say, it's not a like for like comparison with the Leica, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. If it's the first time to my channel, then please do subscribe. Press notifications, you'll be notified when the next video is out. And if it was a video of interest and you liked it, well then give it a thumbs up. That helps to support the channel. That's really appreciated. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Cheers.